to another Choco live demo. Today it's not Nadine standing here, but it's Nadine's daughter. My name is Kaylee, and you guys have highly requested to see me. So here I am, not just saying hi, but demonstrating a technique to you guys. Today we are painting on varnished surfaces. Now, the first very important step is to use lacquer thinners to clean the surface properly before starting to paint. So we use lacquer thinners, no turpentine or benzene. Ladies, just think it's lacquer to be thin. Then secondly, I've put some masking tape around the corners where I don't want to get any paint. And then today I'm also going to use a foam roller. And the size of the foam roller is 110 millimeter in size. And a very important step is to make sure that your varnish surface is in a good condition and older than six months. If it is not older than six months, just be patient. So I'm going to take this beautiful color. It is called Dovet. I've also used it on my cupboards over here. It is a beautiful antique white color. You need to shake the bottle before opening. If you don't have any wax paper, you can just use Gladrip like we did over here. I'm going to open the paint. I'm going to throw a decent amount of paint into my paint tray. We can add more if it's necessary. I'm going to take my foam roller. I'm going to distribute the paint all over my foam roller. If we work on larger flat surfaces, you use a low hair roller, but because it's such a tiny piece of flat surface, we're only going to use a foam roller. Not too much paint, but a decent amount. I'm going to start in the middle, going up and down. It's okay if it makes blotches. If you're working with a foam roller, make sure that there's no breeze around you. Otherwise, the air bubbles will pop and it will have a rough texture. I'm going all the way down. As you can see, there is quite a lot of air bubbles, but that is okay. It is normal. It happens. So if this happens, I'm going to learn you how to fix it. So you take your um, roller and you're going to go horizontally to get any stripes away. And then the air bubbles will also disappear in with the time. I'm going to put more paint on my foam roller. Dry it a little bit. Start in the middle and just carry on. It is really not hard to do this. It's very easy and I'm just enjoying myself. Keep in mind when you paint on a dark surface and be using a light color, for instance, divert or cloud white. You must at least put on three coats before it covers because we are using a foam roller. The foam roller actually absorbs the paint. So make sure that you do three coats and give it time before or when you paint it your first coat to let it dry before applying the second coat. So I'm just going all the way down. There's more air bubbles, but that is okay. I'm going horizontally. And I am just carrying on. Going all the way down, putting some more paint on my foam roller. I'm going to come and stand this side to finish the side off. Spreading it evenly. Getting all the 
faces that are not painted yet. This is absolutely a beautiful color. And keep in mind, this is the first coat, so this is the foundation of everything that's going to happen on top. And there it is pretty much done. Going horizontally to get rid of the stripes and the air bubbles. And now I'm going to give it time to dry before I put on a second coat. Now, the final result will be on Facebook. Unfortunately, I'm not going to do it now, but the final result will be visible on Facebook. Now we are moving on to this inspiration of geometrical shapes. We've also done it in my room on the white brick wall, as you can see. There we've also used Torina's idea and reddish mellow, also with a little bit of maid. But now, we are just going to use Torina's idea and reddish mellow on my door. So, here is Torina's idea. It's a beautiful new color of Chalk Horse Range. I'm taking reddish mellow, shaking the bottle. I'm going to use a clean paint tray and a clean foam roller. It's the same size, 110 millimeter. Just going to put this over here so it doesn't mess. I still need to close that, but that's okay. I'm also going to throw a generous amount, amount of paint in my paint tray. I'm like my mom now, I use my hands for everything. I'm going to take my foam roller and I'm going to distribute the paint all throughout my foam roller, just like I did with the dovet. Not too wet. And now we're going to carry on with this shape over here. Now, to keep in mind, you mustn't paint too, you mustn't have too much paint at the sides of the masking tape, otherwise it will leak underneath. So I'm just going to paint throughout the middle. This is absolutely a beautiful color. It matches with Tariana's ideas. And I am just enjoying myself. I'm painting. This is super fun and relaxing. And to think that you are making your bedroom look even nicer. <laughs> So I'm doing exactly what I'm doing this. I'm not doing anything different. If you want to wash your foam roller after painting, you simply just put it into normal water. You don't have to sand. Chalker paint has a building sealant. And here I can't go um, up and down, so I need to turn my foam roller a bit. If you want to get, a, get rid of the air bubbles, you press softly, not too hard, very gently, to get rid of all the air bubbles. So now I'm going to put on a little bit more paint. Not too much, distribute it evenly. I'm going to carry on going to turn it sideways. And this is really not hard. It is super easy and very fun. So I'm just turning my brush to get in all the areas. Just going to do a little tight so there. Going 
going up and down, distributing the paint. Getting rid of all the air bubbles. And this is really how easy it is to paint onto a varnish surface. Now I'm just going to let this dry, I'm going to peel off the masking tape afterwards and then I'm going to put more coats of the velvet and then when the results are final, I'm going to take a photo, we're going to post it on Facebook. Now thank goodness my demo is over, it was a short one, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, it is nerve-wracking to do a demo, but on to my mom again. I can retire very soon. Kaylee, that's amazing and this is absolutely Kaylee's idea. So we'll show you what the final result looks like the moment she's done with her room. Um, Kaylee can actually now paint the entire house. And she has showed you how easy it is. It really is easy working with charcoal. I quickly want to show you what the melamine um, surface looks like that we started painting last week. Come walk with me, Kaylee, just mind the paint trays. Then we're going to take a walk to my room and I'm also going to give you more inspiration downstairs of a door that Kaylee is also busy painting with different shapes and masking tape. Masking tape, your best tool to create straight lines. And as Kaylee mentioned, make sure when you're working close to your masking tape that your foam roller is not too wet so that the paint can't seep in underneath. So this is the um, melamine door wall, part of my room that we've painted last week. And this is Lee's painting that's on there. Here's a wicker chair that we've chalked. I have dry brushed those sections. I've just used a paintbrush and sanded the arms to create a distressed look. And that is done. Now we, let's quickly we take a walk to the other door. It's raining today, so we had to think quickly to change the outside washed wall to a different demo. So if weather permits, we'll show the outside washed wall on Thursday. I have something else up my sleeve. Let's show you the door and then I'm gonna give you some nice stencil ideas for a chest of drawers or a bed pedestal. shapes on this door as well. Create a step, masking tape, and then you use colors that you like. And you can really be creative and play around. Okay, let's go do some nice stencil work. Katie, how are you feeling? <laughs> Is it nerve-wracking? Yes, it's very nerve-wracking. Oh, you've done amazing. Um, that I'm busy painting. So very important is to number your bed pedestals be or the drawers before you remove them. So I've numbered them on the inside with chalk. Kaylee, if you'll just take that because I have a stellation here. And then something that I've done is I've put them all close together and with stencil of Paris and one of our beautiful quarter mandala stencil designs. I've created a stencil pattern with, I'm just gonna show you how I put it. There's the circle. So they all come together. Oh, I can't now see. It's more or less something like this. And then I've used stencil of Paris to create the stencil effect. On previous videos, we did show it. It's a thick paste. There's very little left that you apply with a paint scraper. 
and you just spread it over your surface with a paint scraper. Now next, I'm going, I've waited for the center of Paris to dry and then you paint a base coat. So I'm using the color Martin's Move. Clean it well with lacquer thinners again. That is always your first very important step when working on varnish surfaces, wall tiles, melamine surfaces. No sanding is required, but you need to clean well with lacquer thinners. And what I do is I just apply my first coat of paint with a paintbrush. I've masked these areas so that my paint doesn't leak on areas where I don't want any paint to sit. Once your first coat is done, we are going to start with a washing technique with lots of exciting colors to create a mottled effect. Very similar as what I wanted to show today, but um, we have rain and we're not complaining. So there was questions, what are you using? What cloth? It's called a mutton cloth and you get it from any hardware store. They come in rolls and you cut them according to size. We always recommend to use the size of a kitchen towel. More or less. Okay, and then we are going to fold it like a ball and we have done it before but I'm just going to give some extra ideas, share extra ideas with you. We are going to, this is the bottom drawer, middle and top and we are going to play around with the following colours. So our base coat is Martin's Move, we have Ishmael's Ish, we have Matte Black, Nayo's New, and Jane's shade would also work. I just don't have any. Nade, and then the color we painted our base coat is Martin Smooth. And now I'm going to play around with the different colors. Like Ailey said, I'm always using my hands and I'm spreading some matte black onto my damp cloth, which is folded like a ball in the palm of my hands. So I'm, I fold it away so that no frills or loose fluff can get to my surface. I flatten it with my free hand, that it's flat in the palm of my hand, and very gently, I start moving in circular movements. And this is just a base color for my first wash attempt and I want the bottom to be quite darker. And as Gailey said today, you just need to have fun. You can't make mistakes. If you want to change something, you can always go back and change. As you can see, I put my drawers against each other so that the colors can blend. I just want to create a subtle wash effect there. My stencil of Paris, you can see the design. Oh, it's going to look amazing. Next, I'm going to add some Ishmael's Ish. I can use the same cloth. I'm just turning it to an area where it's more clean. Two fingers full of paint on my damp cloth. I blend it into my cloth that there are no blobs of paint sitting. And on top of my matte black, and I just want to see that it, when it's, when it's humid or rainy, paint takes longer to dry. So I'm just can you see the change, Kaylee, on the screen? It's always difficult to know if it's visible. I'm just going to add some more. So what the Ishmael Ish does, it just turns down the black a bit.
and it just blends it together. I just want to get it in there. And we can always continue with black again later if we want to make anything darker. Okay, now I'm going to be playful and I'm going to add some nade. So once again, same cloth. It's locked down. We don't have much left of nothing. My nade. And as the picture I have posted earlier this week, this really gives a beautiful patina effect. And very gently, on this section, I start to play with Nate. Make sure that the colors blend into one another. And I'm going to be even more playful and add some nails new. Kaylee's shaking her head, she thinks I'm crazy. It's gonna look absolutely amazing. Okay, let's do it. In between, how stunning is that? Ladies, and if there are gents watching, I'm just having fun. And now I'm going to end it off with some Davit. So clean section, two fingers full of paint. Believe me or not, but I am clean every morning before the day starts, but it doesn't last for long. Flat cloth and the top section, very light pressure. I'm adding some Davit. You use so little paint and it creates such a beautiful effect. Kaylee, can you see any questions that I can answer? Mm, not yet. Okay. Next, I take a 100 grit piece of sandpaper and I'm going to sand. Excuse for the sound, but quickly see what a huge difference that makes, difference it makes. And I'm going to do the edges. I just want to remove my masking tape. No, it's my dirty fingers that have touched there. Let's quickly just fix it. Let's sand the edges. in between to get an authentic wooden look and feel something old picture of what it looks like on my big pedestal when it's completely done. I just want to blend those in. Nadine, we have a question. Yeah. Um, this, it's in Afrikaans. For it goud droog. The paint takes 20 minutes more or less to dry per coat, but it does take longer when it when we have days with rain or humidity days. 
so the pain doesn't dry on you while you're still busy working. And as you can see, I am fixing and changing what I want to fix and change immediately. So if I feel I've sanded too much, I can simply paint back on and wash. And let's do the same here. So take some Nate, take some Martin's Move, wash it in with my cloth, and I fix and hide whatever I want to hide or change straight away. So that's why I didn't wash on this. As you can see, it's still drying, which is lovely if you want to do a blending technique. The paint allows you time to blend the colors together. And I'm quite happy with the outcome of this. Quickly see if I would add a little bit white. Davet or cloud white would work perfectly. Onto the surface, what would happen? Even over the areas where I did wash. So I'm just very lightly going to press. Let's see how subtly that changes. Can you see what happens? It even creates a more of an authentic old look and feel to your surface. And this is purely just having fun. Enjoy what you are creating. And as you've seen, you can change anything as you go along. Look how stunning this becomes. And I will just carry on forever. This is absolutely amazing. Can you see, okay, I'm going to play now exactly as I have demonstrated with various colors, wash, 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 at the end, add some velvet. If you've washed onto something, say for instance, you want, you feel that the matte black, these lines, it's uneven, even on a, on a wall surface. You continue to wash, but you add the first color that you started working with, which was our Martin's move. And you will wash on top of that color where you feel that there are imperfections to hide any imperfections. So let's do it. I return to Martin's move. And now I wash on top of my black with my Martin's move. And what that does, it just hides any imperfections. and then you can play again. And the more colors you add on top of each other, the nicer it becomes, I will at the end, I will sand so that the white of my stencil of Paris is revealed as over here. And then this will be a very unique, beautiful and big pedestal. The last thing I want to share with you is I have posted this morning and I'm going to sit. I've posted these jars hanging outside. It was actually a shoot that we did for the home magazine at Garden World um, at, in December last year. And I used, sorry, let me just give my nose a quick wipe. It's not corona, it's just the weather. Um, so, we use these jars as inspiration, what to do with your empty choco jars. There were questions of how do I clean them? If the paint has hardened inside, you use lacquer thinners. Leave it in there, shake it often, and that thinners will actually dissolve the paint over time. If it's still wet, wash them out immediately with water, and then you can do so much with painted jars. Choco is also a chalk board paint, all of these colors. So here we have Jaco, we have Simon Says, Matte Black, and Karema is named after my sister-in-law, and we're expecting a little nephew in July. So Karen, we're thinking of you. 
um, chalk or is a chalkboard paint all the colors you can personalize it um, with love you can write on all the colors whether you've placed it or not at the factory we have a fridge painted in Jaco we sealed it with a glaze and we still use it as a blackboard surface right on there Fricky always wants mixed grill so mixed grill continues to stay on that fridge and um, with love so this is an idea what to do with your jars I and mean, then how do we put the rope on where's the rope now Katie, did you see what I do with it? Here it is. I found it. Okay, so what you do with a rope, one single piece of rope can be used so that you can hang your console jars. You can put plants in it. It can be outside. It can be in a bathroom. Um, so how do we tie the string, the rope around the jar? So you take it around. One loose end. And you make a knot. But I don't tie it too tight because the other piece of string needs to go through here. So I just make sure it's tight but not too tight. And I make a knot on this side. Then the other loose end. I push through here. It needs to be tied so that when you hang it, it doesn't come loose. So you push the other loose end through here and you make a knot on this side. Now you have a kokodama that can hang. Just look here, I just want to make sure it's nice and tight. And there you have a hanging console jar with just a single piece of rope. You can hook it on built on hoops or whatever, hang it on your patio, or wherever you like. How to paint onto glass? You clean it well with lacquer thinners, allow for the thinners to dry, and very important, between paint coats, wait for the paint to dry properly before you start with your next coat. And that's all for today. I'm so sorry that it rained. Um, all my mirrors are painted and I, I can't wait to reveal it to you, but we'll do it on Thursday at 3. If weather permits, else we'll come up with a creative idea. I'm going to continue to wash on my drawers and I'll share the final finals with you and then a special thank you to Kay that shared her creative ideas with us. She's always behind the camera and I'm so proud of you, Kate, for being so brave today. Have a lovely Thursday, Tuesday, sorry, <laughs> and stay safe, stay healthy and stay positive. Bye.